All right, Jim Laird, strength coach and now expat from the United States is here to talk about why he fled the United States, which he says <laughs> is dramatic. But I asked, is it wrong? And he said, not really. <laughs> it's not wrong that you fled the United States. <laughs> He's sitting in Nicaragua right now, uh, living it up by the beach. And Jim, before we talk about what you're going to do down there and everything, let's sure. talk about why you left. Because right. when I see this article from the New Republic, that says mm -hmm. the Americans who are fleeing the United States acting as if the Americans, I mean, I don't know how you would read this, but I read this as they're right. saying the Americans, right? The Americans right. who are fleeing the United States. Yes. So all the Americans, not, they don't say some of the Americans who are fleeing the United right. States. They say the Americans. And right. the sub headline says the rise <laughs> of a violent far right is forcing a growing number of citizens to consider emigrating to other countries. Some vulnerable minorities fear they may have no choice. Jim, is this why you left? The violent far right is forcing you out? No, no, not at all. It's funny. Uh, those uh, those minorities that uh, that basically uh, I, I really don't know where those those minorities that feel that they're being violently oppressed by the far right are going to flee to, because uh, most of those people, the countries they go to um, are not going to like them very much. Um, so it's, it's very interesting. We'll back up. I guess Allison got booted off here, but, um, no, I'm I'll here. back up here. You're, you're there. Okay. You in full. Okay. Well, the, the first, the reason I originally wanted to leave the United States is because I had some health challenges, um, number of years ago, basically for me being an indoor zoo animal, uh, being in the gym from five in the morning till eight at night. And I didn't wasn't able to fix these challenges until I lived a more outdoor lifestyle. And so I was like, once I embraced being outside, being in the sun more, being in nature more, it really changed my life. It saved my life. And uh, I really felt like I was doing a disservice to people um, by having them stay in an office all day and then having them come work out in a gym indoors. And so it was a number of years ago I started <clears throat> researching, like, where can I open an outdoor gym? Like, Kentucky is not a good place for an outdoor gym. You know, the, the, the summer is too hot and too muggy. And then the winter is too, it's just too yucky. And, and so I was like, well, you know, I did the best I could while I was there. But then I basically started looking at places like Florida, started looking at places like Tulum. And they were just not a full, they were just unsustainable money wise. Like, you couldn't get beachfront property in either of those places for a reasonable amount of money. And then I found Nicaragua. And then what happened was, is during COVID or the beer bug, um, when they locked my gym down for six months, I was like, this is it. Like, this is ridiculous. You know, I can't train people. All the advice they were giving was the complete opposite of what should have been done. Like, you know, when you're dealing with like respiratory viruses and things like that, you should be going outside, getting in the sun. You should be exercising. The last thing you want to do is restrict your breathing. You know, that's going to make you unhealthier which is shown out to be true now. And then they were, of course, mandating certain things that you had to take. And I was just like, this is ridiculous. Then they started talking about, um, you know, they started talking about uh, having business owners in Kentucky being forced to have the, 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 the shot in order to do business. And I was like, I'm not going to live in a state. So I moved to Florida and, um, and started working in a, at a gym there as an independent contractor. And then I, then I teamed up with Dr. Stillman and we started doing online work so I could basically work from anywhere in the world. And then uh, came down here to Nicaragua and met met the uh, the uh, CEO of a, of a development company called ECI Development here at Grand Pacifica, and uh, going to build an outdoor gym out here. So that's basically the 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 quick ver version notes. It started off as just wanting to find affordable real estate for an outdoor gym, and then it ended up being just not liking the direction that uh, that the United States was going as far as policy. Uh, and then I was just like, you know, Nicaragua and Mexico are the only two countries in the world that didn't lock down during COVID. They didn't have mandatory, mandatory clot shot um, mandates or anything like that. So uh, I was just like, you know, I started looking at it and I was just like, yeah, it looks like a good place to be. And most of the people here that are here from Canada, the United States are all people that fled because they didn't want to take the shot, you know. And they also wanted to make their dollar go along much further. Like, you know, I, I make a decent amount of money, but even in the United States, for me, I eat a lot of food. It was getting stupid expensive. I mean, the food is a quarter of the price here as it is in the U.S. And, I, you know, I couldn't imagine having a family today going to the grocery store like I was spending $500 a week on food. And uh, that's just me. 
So I couldn't imagine feeding a, an entire family. Um, well, ridiculous. and you were telling me before we went live too about the quality that you get for less money because oh. in the United States, it's so hard to find quality food unless you're going direct to your rancher or down the street. It, it is it, it, the taste, it, it, even the even in Mexico, if you go to Mexico and, and get even drink a Coke, it's got three ingredients. That's it. There's not 7 million chemicals in it. Um, I can go to eat fast food in Mexico and I don't feel like I'm going to die. You know, if I eat fast food in the United States, I eat really well. If I have fast food in the United States, it, 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 it rips me up. Down here, I can eat fast food. I can have, you know, nachos and I can have bread and things like that. And it doesn't bother me at all. Not so much in the United States. Um, mm -hmm. So and, and the food is simpler. Things are much, much simpler here. And um, the I mean, I can get a tomahawk ribeye for like 15 or 20 dollars. Three pounds. Mm -hmm. That's 85 dollars in the U.S. You know, so. Wow. Oh, yeah. I have been looking for, since we're talking about this, I have been looking for a half cow. I think I'm going to order through mm -hmm. White Oak Pastures because they have actually the best price. Will Harris has been on the podcast before. Um, oh, actually, sure. I hope my dad doesn't watch this one, at least until after Christmas, because I actually just bought Will's book for uh, Christmas. I'm not being paid to do this, but it looks pretty good. A Bold Return to yeah. Giving a Damn by Will Harris. He's a great um, dude. Yeah, and he has the best accent pretty much of anyone I've ever interviewed. So other than maybe the Kiwis that come on every once in a while. But mm -hmm. uh, they've got a great price on a half cow. So I'm probably going to order from them. They're only a few hours actually north of us anyway, and they deliver right to your door, which you can't beat. But sure. that said, as I've been looking around, uh, it's not cheap because Florida, they import hay because – yeah. the hay here that you know, it doesn't have a lot of nutrients in it and they import it from where we came from in Washington. So it's really expensive. Sure. But on top of it, I stumbled across somebody. I didn't know anything about Wag Wagyu, Wag Wagyu. I'm not sure if I'm Wagyu, saying it right. Yeah, Wagyu beef. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I just thought that was just another kind of cow. It was mm -hmm. like, I, I want to say it was like five or $6,000 for a half. I was like, uh, yes. yeah, I think this is not it's, the cow it's for the, me. It's the fancy schmancy stuff. <laughs> I did not know that. Why it's so expensive, I don't understand. Okay, since Jim brought it up, uh, if you want to stay in touch or watch videos, you can go to stillmanwellness.com. He and Dr. Stillman do lots of videos and have their own podcast and are a really great wealth of information for holistic medicine. So go check them out. Um, I want to say one thing about this article, take you right back mm -hmm. to this for a second, Jim. The author here talks about being gay and feeling like... Uh, I think it's a he. Let me just make sure. Let's go back here. Uh, Alaric. I'm not totally sure. That could be. I, a I mean, honestly, I the most of the people that I know that uh, are conservative don't care if you're gay. Like, I really I am a libertarian. I don't give a flying leap what you do in your in your bedroom behind closed doors as long as with con consenting adults. But I guarantee you, if you go like down here. You know, they know the difference between men and women. Like I got yelled at. I mean, you can get I could if I say like I said publicly in the US in certain places that there's a difference between men and women. I could get screamed at and yelled at. And it's happened to me. Right. Um, I mean, I got yelled at at, at whole at uh, Trader Joe's. Some some person. Uh, I don't want to offend anybody. I won't define who they are. Some person came up to me and started yelling at me because I look too masculine. So, you know, it's just uh, it. it it's crazy. Like even the most extreme right wing people I know don't give a hoot about what you do behind closed doors. Like mm -hmm. they don't care. Like if you think you're a lampshade, go for it. Knock yourself out. But <laughs> I, I don't want to live in a country where they don't know the definition between what a difference between a man and a woman is like. That's just not the kind of culture I want to live in. And down here, it's very family oriented. Um, you know, the family is a big deal. So I, I, I just, I can't live in a culture where they don't know what a woman is. Like, I'm just, I'm, I'm gone. I'm out. That's it. Over. Done. I wonder if they've seen Matt Walsh's What is a Woman down there. Um, okay. They, would, they, they don't even, they don't even like, that doesn't even like in their mind, they just can't even understand how there'd be confusion about that. Or why there's even a video out there called What is a Woman. Um, right, right. They just, they just don't, there's no, it's not even an issue here. Yeah. Okay. DMSR on locals says, and probably far less EMF. I want to talk to you about that later. Yes. I think that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, join my editorial board, five bucks a month, allisonmorrow.locals.com. You get to put in questions ahead of time for interviews. We're going to throw some of those at Jim in a minute. But Jim, let me go back to this um, article, okay? Because it says, yes. while dual citizenship was something I always wished I had as convenience, I now had a more urgent reason to get it. 
Huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Paw Patrol. You need to see Paw Patrol. We got a Paw Patrol demand real fast. Jim, can you mm-hmm. tell people, my big question here is, basically, it's what we're hearing over and over again, which is democracy is under attack. Do you no. think, I think democracy, hey, hang on a second. Well, one, one where on. the United States Demo- is not wait, a democracy. Jim, let me ask you this real fast. Yeah, let me ask you this sure. real fast. It, they say democracy is under attack. This is actually a point we have in common with, I think, the political, like if I were to call them the sort of political opposition, I'm not sure what the right term would be. We agree that democracy is fading away, but not for the reasons they cite. What do you think about that? Well, one, we're not a democracy, we're a republic. That, that's well, yes. Thing. Okay. But just stretch it for me. So this is, this is straight out of Saul Alinsky's, uh, you accuse the other side of what you're doing, essentially. You basically gaslight and this is right out of root, uh, whatever for radicals by Saul Alinsky, which is basically the playbook for for a community organization or community organizers. And you basically accuse the other person of what you're doing. That's essentially what's happening. And th- there's no, uh, you, you know, I, I don't think saying that men, biological men, shouldn't compete with 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 biological women is extreme or oppressive, right? That 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 is not. I don't, I don't think that's extreme. I don't think there's any any conservatives in the United States that are saying you can't if you're over the age of 18, you can't identify as whatever you want to identify as. Knock yourself out. Be a lampshade. We'll screw we'll screw a light bulb in you. I really don't care. Right. So they're just basically gaslighting and accusing people of what they're doing themselves, which is um, if you have any kind of freedom uh, based opinion, if you're for self-sufficiency, if you're for, uh, free thought and free thinking that that's look at all the people that have been censored. Look at the people whose bank accounts have been closed down. It's the people that are telling people not to follow the narrative. Right. And, and, and so like myself, you know, I've got, I got censored a whole bunch during beer bug because I was telling people don't buy into this crap, go outside, get, be healthy. Don't wear a face diaper, you know? Um, you know, and so common sense, um, is not so common anymore. And, and, and the last thing they want is people that can think for themselves. And so they're gaslighting people. Okay. Jim, on that note of gaslighting, don't answer this yet, but this is something I want you to chew on. And then after I tell people about my amazing wine answer, Okay. DMSR, no offense, but two weeks to slow the spread started with a right wing president in office with warp speed, two wings, exact same bird. All right. So take that mm-hmm. one. Think on it for a second. Sure. Don't get drunk in the meantime, because I need you to be coherent. If you are looking for an amazing wine, if you're looking for a way to support my work, I have a two in one deal for you. Go to AllisonWinePromo.com. You get 50 percent off my favorite wines and 50% off shipping. These are extremist altitude wines from between six and 9,000 feet in Argentina, extremely remote regions. The grapes work so hard for you. Ne'er, I would say they they ne'er do work harder than any other grape out there probably for you. So you want hardworking grapes, hardworking podcaster, hardworking mom, and you don't have to work hard because you can just sit in your chair and watch all of this while you're drinking some amazing wine, or you're going to bring it to grandma because she voted the wrong way. She got the wrong shot. She did whatever you thought was wrong. Now you think, you know what? Let's let bygones be bygones. It's Christmas time to get together. She'll forget everything with one glass of AllisonWinePromo.com. So go get that wine, support the work. You can also go to TwinEngineCoffee.com slash Allison, where we have some amazing roast, light roast, dark roast. They're all USDA certified organic. They are also extremist altitude, really pro-free speech company, small family owned, and from Nicaragua, the place we're talking about today. Um, they also have a tea. They take the fruit that's around the coffee bean and dry it out. And I love it. It's called Katura tea. I like to cold brew mine. It's uh, pretty low caffeine and high in antioxidants. Goes great with some lemon and a great way to refresh yourself. If you are technically in winter in Florida, which, or Jim's winter, which is like 80 degrees. Finally, got some vitamin D or omegas, or you need some, you can go to greenpasture.org and use the promo code Allison 10, or just check out the affiliate links in the description. There's plenty of other products. The affiliate link will take you directly to green pasture and all I have to do is shop around. However, if you just go to greenpasture.org and you use the promo code Allison 10 at checkout, that is another great way to support my work. I have been taking the fermented cod liver oil, butter oil blend for, I don't know, 13 years. I, 
uh, healed cavities naturally with this product. I love this company. They brought me out to the Wise Traditions Conference for the Weston A. Price Foundation this last year. I got to meet all kinds of amazing doctors and scientists and researchers and stuff. So love the company, greenpasture.org. And it's just uh, a bunch of great products there. Okay, Jim. So what do you think about what I just told you, what DMSR had to say? Just uh, two well, ways. I, I would agree word. partially with what he says. It, I, I think American politics is kind of like the WWE, the World Wrestling Federation, or the World, Re whatever the new, the new uh, acronym is of that, where, you know, there's all these people fighting and behind the scenes, they're all having beers and laughing. Um, I, you know, if you look at when, when, uh, Trump rolled out the vaccine, uh, warp speed, all the Democrats were fighting him over it. You know, this is Donald Trump's vaccine. We're not going to take it. And then as soon as Biden came into power, they all got behind it and were forcing, you know, telling people they had to take it or they lose their job. So there's powers behind the scenes that are pulling strings The you know, I think the elected officials are mostly a joke. I think there's some people in power that are sincere. I think Rand Paul is one of those people. I think uh, RFK Jr. is very sincere. Uh, I mean, honestly, I used to work. I'm, I'm not a I'm not a, a, a Republican or a Democrat. I don't really identify as anything as far as that. But I, I did work used to work for Donald Trump, and he is he, he is a, a very harsh person uh, as far as because he just you know he grew up in New York and dealing with that you know kind of environment there. But he always treated. He stayed at our hotels a lot at our, my hotel. I was working at in Aspen a lot. He always treated, he always tipped well. I can't say that for, uh, he treated my staff very well. Uh, he was very kind to me, very generous. Um, you know, I can't say that for the, uh, you know, I've had several presidents that I've checked into rooms and dealt with personally, foreign leaders, uh, secretaries of state. And I can't say the same thing about those people. Um, uh, so, you know, I don't, you know, I, I I try not to get involved in politics, but it, it's really he, he's right. It's the same the same bird. One I think one side's flying into the ground straight into the ground, and the other the other side's flying in at like a forty five degree angle. But both are going to crash. It's just one's going straight into the ground, and the other one's going at like a slight forty five degree angle. This is interesting. They say polling by Gallup of a thousand Americans aged 15 and older indicated that in the first two years of the Trump administration, 16% of Americans said they hope to leave the country permanently. A sharp <laughs> rise from the 10 to 11% who said the same during the Bush and Obama years with particularly high rates among women. Data for subsequent years provided by Gallup show that the figure fell to 14% in 2019 and 2020, but then rose again to 15% under Biden. So actually pretty similar. The surveys mm -hmm. under Biden took place between April 22nd to June 21st, 2021, and April 20th, blah, 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 latter coinciding the Supreme Court's Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization decision that overturned Roe v. Wade. Uh, also following the Dobbs decision, Google Trends indicated a significant spike in searches for LGBT-friendly countries. So they, this guy's obviously, he's got his thing, so or she. So that's that's their bent here. But, you know, I just did a, a video about... Uh, how the Seattle Times finally just wrote an article saying it really is true that Republicans are fleeing Washington. Like it took years for them to say that. And the, the funny thing and was California the headline, like, and New York. Yeah. And well, yeah. Well, they were talking about California, <laughs> Oregon and yeah. Washington for Idaho specifically because it's a right. you know local newspaper. But right. The way they wrote it in the headline was they really are like not just that they are, but they really are like wow, I guess we, I guess they are like, we thought this was just a nuts idea and well, they never really got into COVID at all about the civil liberties that people were seeking right. to, to, to find again in States like Florida or Idaho. Mm -hmm. The one thing he wrote at the end about civil liberties was that America, this is a quote, I think I'm getting to get this exactly right. Almost <laughs> paraphrase close to quote that America is still a free country unless you're seeking reproductive rights. That's what he said. So, so none of the things that like I got fired over having a podcast on the side while I was working for the government, you know, associating well, with people. Well, and and here's, here's somebody. the thing. I'm not a political expert by any means, but I study history and, and I read a lot and I listen to a lot of really smart people. Here's the funny thing about the whole Roe v. Wade thing. The Supreme Court just handed it off to the states. So it's not like they're banning abortion completely, right? The difference is, is 20 years ago, you could have a reasonable discussion about it and say, hey, look, what's the cutoff, right? Like, what's the date that you think is, you know, both sides could come together and come up with a reasonable conclusion. Now it's either like even like in California and Canada, 
you, you can you can you can actually abort the baby after it's born. And I think they're pushing for that in California as well. So you've got people on the abortion side that are just like, you know, you can't win with this, with this, uh, have it, you can't have a reasonable discussion about this stuff with people. And that's part of the reason I want to leave the U S is because I can, I can give my opinion and be hated for it. Um, it, you know, if I have an opinion that goes against the narrative, you know, it used to be, we can agree to disagree, but now it becomes personal. It's, it's hateful. Yeah. It's, it's not. You know, I, I I have good discussions with people all the time that I don't agree with, and I just agree to disagree. That used to be very common in the United States, but now it's become so polarized. They're doing that on purpose. They're playing people against each other to divide people, you know, so. I just think it's, it's interesting because when you, when you hear these arguments, like, let me just go back to it one more time um, about, you know, concern basically over... <sighs> Well, this is Trump's most damaging legacies about bigotry, hostility, uh, anti-Semitism, racism, xenophobia, misogyny, homophobia, all these things. Um, but, you know, generally speaking, pointing towards civil liberties, like it's amazing how somehow we're all, we are all those of us who are concerned would agree we are concerned about civil liberties. But where we seem like we're living on different planets is right. who we think is taking them away. You right. know, because right. I don't see a white nationalist on Facebook making, you know, hateful no. comments or something no. as any threat to my ability to speak, to associate freely, to choose healthy medical it, options for it's myself really, and my family. They're trying to flip it around where your identity is your is your sexuality or your identity is your race. Uh, you know, you should be judged on the content of your character, like Dr. King said, and, and what you can accomplish as a person. I, I don't judge people until I talk to them and 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 interact with them. Right. Um, and that's the way it should be. Like, I don't care what you decide to do in the privacy of your own home. I've you know, I've hired I've had, you know, people who work for me that were uh, alternative lifestyle people. I don't care as long as they show up to work and do a good job and treat people respectfully. That's that's fine by me. Like, I don't really care what you do in your private time. As long as with consenting adults, I don't I don't give a rat's ass. So and most people and, and here's the funny thing. A lot of my gay friends are fairly conservative and they're just like, this is ridiculous. They're just like, what the hell's happening here? Like they, they don't know what to do because they're they're. I feel really bad for them because they're really in a really weird spot because they're like, this stuff's getting wild. And we're like, we're just one of them. We just want to make a living. We want to, you know, we want to make a living and 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 be treated well. And and most of most of my gay friends say they are. They're treated well. Like I, I don't. I couldn't care less. Um, I don't look at them any differently than anyone else. So it, it, it's just like I said. They're just they're just basically accusing the other side of what they're doing themselves. And so it's uh it's um it's interesting. It's it's wild, and uh, it's something I don't want to participate in anymore. I want to make sure everybody knows I have a PO box now. All right. PO box three, three, five, five, Danellen, Florida, three, four, four, three, two. Send me some mail, send me your loose change. Send me a lottery ticket. Send me some pictures of the kids. Don't send me anything creepy that you made with cutouts from magazine articles, like the letters that serial killers use. Also probably don't send me anything edible. Cause even though you're probably an awesome person, I'm not going to eat it for fear and paranoia that you are trying to poison me. That's just who I am. So I would love to hear from you. Some people don't like to use credit cards online. It's a great way to just send me a couple bucks if you want. If every single person who watches videos sent $1 a month, not only would it help buy groceries and whatnot, but I could probably hire a producer and we could like really churn out content. $1 a month. If every single person, $1 a month. There's some people who give five bucks a month on the editorial board, send me a five buck, uh, five dollar cash check, whatever in the mail. You think that's not a lot. It is. If every single person did that, it would be a huge wave of support. So just a heads up on that. And I am going to start reading mail maybe like once a month. So I'm going to give Shelly and Sherry a shout out. Shelly sent me a picture of the family. Thank you for the Christmas card. She says, thank you for the work that you do. It has really meant more than I can tell you during the craziness of the past several years. God bless you and your beautiful family. Merry Christmas, Shelly. And then Sherry and Chip sent me this. Dear Allison, we listen to you faithfully. Thank you so much for your honest approach, always seeking truth. Merry Christmas to you and yours with love from Seattle, Sherry and Chip. So thanks again. Don't forget P.O. Box 3355, Danellen, Florida, 34432.